This podcast was brought to you by Dragon Shield. Check out the affiliate link down below to help support the show. Well, welcome back to another Play to Win podcast where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan. I'm Tyler. And this week, the whole gang is together because we're going to be talking about test hands. Mulligans. Mulligans. Yeah, that's really what it we're is. We're testing these puppies out. We're figuring them out. I just reprogrammed them and they're new. They're <laughs> <laughs> doing it. I, I don't know what's going to happen. One finger at a time. I got it all. So let's see if we can use these. To shuffle. To shuffle. Oh, God. To that's... shuffle to figure out the first seven cards that we'll draw in a game of Magic. 100%. So we'll test nice. hands with our test hands. We're, We're going to test we hands go. with our test hands. Yep. Yes. Can you put some like robot computer sounds when we're doing our hands around? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to each choose a deck that we have up on Moxfield, and we're just going to run some test hands with them to figure out what we would keep and what we wouldn't keep, and sure. maybe we'll learn something along the way. Should we talk about mulligans at all before we get into that? That's a great idea. Like, just like general theory on mulligans? Yeah. Because I feel like mulligans is one of the main differences between CDH and other forms. Formats. Honestly, even like modern and legacy, like there's a humongous more emphasis on mulligans than there is in some of these other formats. I agree. Tyler, what do you think about mulligans? I think um, it definitely is like th the most important early game decision point for sure, obviously. Uh, I think there are two things that are really worth keeping in mind when we're talking about mulligans. One is um, it's going to depend a lot on your on your land count in your deck, um, how aggressive you can be with mulligans. So for decks that run extremely low land counts, and I'm thinking like, you know, 24 to 25, which many CDH, CDH decks do now, um, you really need to be hitting a lot of lands or a lot of um, fast mana, some combination of those to get you through the game. And uh, some of your mulligan equity sort of, some, some of your tries are just going to be spent finding the lands, whereas in a lot of other decks, they might be spent finding more perfect of a hand. Yeah, I feel like in your card advantage commander scenarios, you want a hand that has mana that will allow you to play it very early so that you can start revving your engines right away. Exactly. So I think the the fewer lands you have, the more your time you're going to spend mulliganing just to hit your mana sources. And that's something that you should be paying attention to as you're learning a deck to understand if you should go up lands. Conversely, if you find you, you always have the mana in hand, then you probably want to go down lands because you want to spend non-zero of your mulligans just getting the land sources so that you're not flooded later in the game. Yeah, that's a pretty good point because I've been playing to Nijeska recently and that deck has 23 lands in it and I mulligan a lot. But for basically any turbo black red deck, I am already going to be mulliganing a lot because I want something very specific. So I feel like the reduced land count in that deck is pretty great because I'm already going to be mulliganing to five. This way I can guarantee that there's more options that I can get action because that deck really only needs like one land a lot of the time to kind of go off as as long as I can get some mana, it, it's okay. So I'm mulliganing anyway. So I, I, I don't know. I like the low land count on that deck. I think broadly speaking, we want a mulligan for um, action, for significant card advantage. So like an early Ristic Study or a turn one Mystic Remora in an early seat position. Um, or we want a uh, mulligan for the silver bullets or important pieces of interaction that, or stacks for that matter, if you're playing a stacks deck, that we would need once we see what our pod is and understand what our deck needs to do against the other decks in the pod. Yeah, I, just, I definitely agree. There's a lot of pod evaluation that comes into this. I think Dylan took the words right out of your mouth. You're doing a great job of hosting right now. I love this. You're like the uh, like the MC of the event. No, 100%. I think that pod composition changes your mulligan so much. And like, which or turn order that you're in because if you are playing first your dockside hand might not be that great if you have a hand that only does dockside on turn two but you're going first this is a bad example because like you're probably going to keep dockside but if you're going last that dockside hand is really good and mystic remora is probably a better example if you're turn one turn one mystic remora doesn't matter what else if you're like in seat one i'm doing that a lot but if i'm in seat four and all my hand does is turn one remora on a first seven i would probably look to something more broken than that i don't know is that fair yeah absolutely similarly if you're on a stacks plan i think if you're early in turn order in seats one or two then a turn one trinosphere or a turn one deafening silence is a lot more impactful 
useful than if you are fourth in seat order and everyone has the chance to get their fast mana down before you impact them. Or honestly, like if you were like second in seat order and then you kind of hand the game to the person in first seat order, yeah. like that can come up a ton too. So That's, it's I've, very important that you focus on your plan and the timing of your plan. Really, the summary is you got to keep a hand with the plan. You can't yes. keep something that's a hand that's not going to do anything over the course of turn one, turn two, and turn three. Um, but you do want to make sure that your plan is going to affect the board in a positive way for you and not set you up for failure down the line. I think the key takeaways are make sure you know the decks you're playing against. That's number one. Make sure you know what players, like what turn order you're in. Numero dos. And make sure that you know your deck very well. What is What does your deck look for? I ran out of languages. Uh, trace. That I just did. Oh, you. I was going to. Oh, those first two language. different languages. I just remember dose. I don't remember what you said for one. What did you say for one? One. Oh, and then you wanted an, a third language. I don't know how to say number in a third language. Ooch. That was. Ooch. The... What's lang- What's that? Turkish. Nice. Ooh. Do you know how to say number? No. Ah, see, uh, th- in English? Yeah. No, oh, you I mean, mean in, in Turkish. Turkish. Well, you didn't say that, Cameron. Well, that was in. I know how to say it number. Was, it was heavily implied in my phrasing. Number. Uh, dude, we're so good at this. We're great at this. <laughs> all right. Well, now that we're all done being assholes, we're going to move on. I think real quick before we move on, I just want to talk about what to look for as far as like cards. Each deck I know is different, but I feel like for me, I have a guideline of what I want a seven to look like, oh, okay. which is like two lands, two pieces of mana ramp. That's two mana or less, ideally like zero or one. A tutor, an interaction, and then a piece of advantage. Ideally cards or maybe mana. That's or like, like Rhystic Study. Right, exactly. That, that's that's really like the dream is. start. Yeah. Two lands, two ramp. Yeah. Tutor, interaction, advantage. That's a dream seven that I'm looking for basically in, in any deck, I think. Yeah, I definitely agree. I do That's think it really still depends on the pod. You know, 100%. I, you, like if I'm playing Ken and I'm staring down three ROG side players, I know I cannot just play, play control against all three of them. Yeah. So in that case, I'm actually looking for a hand that just enables me to go as fast as possible so that uh, I can try and keep up with what those decks are about to do. Or a hand that has a very early Mystic Remora or Rhystic Study that is going to benefit from them doing all the things they're going to do. So it still does depend on pod composition. I like your mindset right there. I just want to point that out real quick because I was thinking that you were going to say you have to look for a counterspell to stop the ROG side, but that's not the, you, you can't stop it. You're you can't stop three your priority sure. exactly like your priority when you're going against those fast pods is i gotta see if i can go faster like that's my a lot of times it's better to be aggressive than it is defensive i think a lot of times most definitely and i also want to say one more thing i'm so sorry before we get into specific mulligans um the way the reason that cdh mulligans are so much different from other formats which is what i kind of said in the beginning no oh, yeah in cdh not only do you get a free mulligan which is fucking insane compared to other formats it makes an enormous difference but the power level discrepancy in your cards in cdh is super high like the difference between mox diamond and the 99th card that you put in your deck is enormous so if you can mulligan aggressively for these extremely powerful cards and find them they pull the weight of a lot more than some of the other cards so i find it it's often and if my first seven isn't literal perfect i'll ship it no matter what if it's not the god hand the next one's free anyway like why stick with just like a fine hand the next one's free and then everyone down past that you get to see all the cards so you get the cherry pick i want these four extremely busted cards that are banned in most other formats i'll play those and that'll grab me back into this game yeah that's a really good point you are a lot less concerned about how many cards are in your starting hand because it's more matters what's on the board and what you're impacting in the game right like there are times in modern where i'm playing i'm like well this hand's got two lands and a couple spells i can cast good enough and, when- you know, and if i get a third land i'll be gold but right i found i can't keep hands in cedh that have if clauses attached to them no way like in limited if i'm missing one thing i can keep that hand and feel fine but in cedh i feel like if i'm missing a very integral part of like my magda experience or from like a kid and like you don't have any mana sources like how are you supposed to right operate in that case so absolutely and if if you don't mind um just to kind of distill what you said i, th- I think if you find yourself keeping a first seven 50 or more of the time you need to like reevaluate just how you mull again as a player skill like yep. just yeah. period because even if you are winning some games you probably could be winning even more games yeah if you mulligan more i think that's a good advice for everyone probably including us is just we should probably be thinking about mulliganing more yeah definitely so tyler since we didn't actually do test hands during your kitten deck tech <laughs> do you want to do some kitten test hands to start with i always want to do kitten test hands cameron all right that sounds great all right well then i have an immediate ship <laughs> 
Oh, uh, yeah? <laughs> it's an immediate Let's read it just in case. Is this from my Perplexing Kinnon list on Moxfield? This is, that the is one? from your Moxfield Perplexing Kinnon list, which can be found in the description of either the video or the audio podcast. Yes. Oh, my God. I don't even want to take a fucking picture of this thing. But I'm gonna <laughs> no, let's put do it. it. Let's see how bad it can be. Yeah. Kinnon just won a tournament, so let's see what how bad it can yeah. be to get the range. This is you know why I mean? you don't keep your first seven. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes <laughs> it has Moon Silver Key, Mystical Tutor, Gataxian Probe, Gilded Drake, Glenelendra Archmage, Hallbreaker Horror, and Worldly Tutor. Well, I didn't hear any lands. Yeah, we're shipping that <laughs> one. I, I didn't don't hear any turn no lands, sources. but there's literally nothing that taps for mana. Yeah, yeah. Nothing to not, do at all. Not where we want to be. How many lands are you playing in Kinnon? Do you know offhand? Um, I I believe right now I'm on 26. It might be 27. Isn't that funny? Does that's it say in there? Why? It does. You play 28. 28. 28. Nice. Oh, that's right. I have not I have not cut um, Urza Saga from the list yet, but I, that is something that I am doing imminently. Oh, okay. What is Urza Saga becoming? I'm not sure yet. There's a couple changes I want to make. I'm, I'm putting Spellskite in. Um, I think the two guys who topped forward with Kinnon um, at the cookout event this past weekend, um, they have talked me into Colossal Sky Turtle, which is something that nice. was always close, but I never tried. I like oh, that one. Okay. Um, so I, like that. I think I'm definitely doing that. Have you thought about the Ent, the Force Cycling Five, no, seven? I am planning on putting in Lorien Revealed. Okay. I'm not going to okay. put in the end. Not, I, I don't why think not? The, because I don't think a 5-7 that makes a food is good enough. That's um, true, but you can hit it. It's like a land that you can hit off Kinnon. Right, but I don't care about hitting a 5-7. Okay. Like, right. it, it would need to be like an 18-7 for me to care about it just on power and toughness. The what about a 5-7 that makes a food? What about a 5-7 that makes a food with reach? It can block Tivit. It can block Krom. It can block everything. It's the biggest thing in the format. I just still don't think it's still good, not enough. good enough. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, what about this? Uh, I thought about this the other day. If you have a way to produce a flickering combo, something, I don't know if Kinnon actually bounces stuff in and out, but when I was thinking something with like Dockside where you're flickering in and out, and for some reason you don't have access to your commander because there's like a Dranith Magistrate, you can flicker the uh, white cycling creature or the uh, green cycling creature to do stuff. I'm so pissed I don't remember their names right now. Hold on. The green cycling creature is the end. Eagles of the North. Generous end. That's not Generous what it end. is. Eagles of the North? No, the, no, it's not that. Eagles of the North. Is it really? Yeah, wow. It wow. But if you have a way to flicker something back and forth but don't have access to your commander, you can flicker either the Generous Ent for infinite food or you can flicker the Eagles of the North for infinite plus one, plus oh in first strike, which is a way to kill your opponents and a way to maybe stay alive a little bit longer. I just think that's interesting. I don't think it is interesting. I don't think infinite food matters enough, though. It doesn't matter huge. It doesn't win you the game or anything like that, but it does buy you time. That's all it does. It, it buys you a second to not die from combat damage, which sometimes you need if you're like, I'm right there. I just need an extra turn to get rid of the Dranith Magistrate. I think it's good besides that. That's just like one little small thing added to a list it that works makes it reasonable. With, it works with like uh, like against Kiki Jiki. Like if someone's trying to do you infinite damage in response. No, uh, in response, if you have it active. You can't do it preemptively though. You can't say, because you have to pick a number. So you'll say, I'll make a billion life. Well, yeah, you make a billion. Yeah, but they have to pick a number of Kiki Jikis or Felidar Sovereigns they to attack you. They have to go to attacks. You. Right. Yeah. yeah. But so if you're then, in combat, do you still have infinite mana to crack all the food is the question. Right. Yeah. Like if they, if they, disrupt your combo and you have to stop at amount of life in game they can just make more kikis than that oh well yeah but i thought we were in a world where like if everything's it, it was, still out it was assumed that like if you were able to make infinite mana and you have it yeah infinite life anyway like why weren't you in a scenario where you could just like make infinite treasures in response or something yeah exactly i'm just saying they could kill something in response and then go to the kiki combo that's all. But they didn't. But they didn't, and you won because of the Kiki. We're getting way off track here. <laughs> I'm not playing the fucking Forest Cycler, You're not Dylan. playing the fucking Forest Cycler. Okay, I think those Cyclers are really good. That's all I want to say is I'm testing one to several in all of my decks right now, and so far I've liked them. We'll see. Um, I'm but glad you brought them up in this episode because yeah. I kind of wanted this episode to be like how good are the land cyclers in CDH? But I figured that was it. Like that was going to be the whole. That's episode, most of the discussion. So that's I most think of they it. they're great at pitching to other things. They're a land that can pitch to other stuff, which is good. I like the flexibility of having something late game that can be something that's not just a land. They're basically a fetch. They can help you restart brainstorm. They can help you with bolus to citadel. I think they're good. They and have then lots you can of cast them on their front side too there's, for a lot of mana. Exactly. So. There's tons of times where I have extra soul ring mana, and I'm like, I want something to do with this extra two mana, and I can do this now. Yep. I only care about the blue one but the blue one yeah i think the blue one's pretty good the blue one i like it in kinnon blue i feel like the extra draw like kinnon makes a thousand mana often that's going to cost like effectively like two mana in kinnon you know like tap two permanents cast this and draw three cards that's gonna be really good so basically i plan to go down two lands from 28 um cutter to saga and another land and put in the the 
modal double face land that comes in on tap for three. That's like pay seven, draw cards equal to the cards in your yep. hand. Yes, yes. That is a, a wounded satellite suggestion. And then I'm going to try Lorian Revealed to see how that feels. Nice. Okay. I love this. Well, I'm glad we brought it back to Kenan. Do you want to take a look at the second test hand? Let's then? do it. So is this, the, is this the second <laughs> this is seven? the second seven. We might want to just like <laughs> mo- swap how that went. <laughs> like, no, no. I think it's good. <laughs> this is the second seven. Okay. What's our so second the second seven? seven here. This should be along with our mindsets. If we have to deal with our brains, so do you. So do you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Windswept Teeth, Chroma Mox, The One Ring, Pogonify, Force of Will, Consecrated Sphinx, and Seedborn Musi. Uh, that was a Pogonify? <laughs> yes. Those oh, were good cards, Cameron. but I don't know if I heard enough to... It Was that turn one Kinnon, turn two? Yeah, turn this, two. Is, this is definitely a keep. This is a keep? This, this is, is a keep, keep because you exiled the Consecrated Sphinx to Chrome Mox, and you're planning to just get to an early Seedborn Muse. So you have the, um, the Windswept Teeth into a land and then chrome mox and then you have a turn one cannon and then we have um pongify available to deal with something we have a seedborn muse plan down the line or you have the force of will to be able to count or something yeah we i think you said force of will but then we're down a blue card in hand what was the what was after when some teeth chrome mox pongify the one ring the The one one ring ring. which could be like if you go turn one cannon and you don't like have then the mana for a turn two seedborn muse. You can still go turn two the one ring if you draw a land. Because we only have three available mana if Kinnon resolves. If with Kinnon this resolves hand, right? and stays around, I, I yeah. definitely think you keep this because you have it's a little risky. Yeah, but it's still turn one um, with with Kinnon and a force of will up, Backup which is, is good. Yeah. yeah, just having a force of will up is is very powerful. And not having to find the seedborn muse for later. Like once you get the seedborn muse, oh, you're gonna yeah. be like, if you hit lands, honestly, this is the best hand. You ever. have Holy shit. Seedborn, seedborn muse. And and one, one ring, ring yes. combo yeah. right it's in the hand. A hundred percent. But if you whiff on lands, you have two shots to draw land. If you hit a land on those first two cards, you are you have a very high chance of winning this well, game. A land or a mana drew, A land or a mana source. Mana would be better. We drew basalt monolith. Oh, so. hell yeah. This is the best fucking hand ever. Holy shit. So turn, so turn, turn two, two, you get to cast mana. basalt monolith with force of will back up and then go right into the, go into ring. the ring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's, uh, that's really good. good. Oh, this is yeah. definitely a turn three win. Like almost assured. Well, like, almost assured. Right. Well, I'm glad we did that. All right. Well, do we want to do another one for Kenan then? Let's we do should. It. Yeah, sure. Right. Cool. Start over. Start start over. So that was just one, and our second seven was the one that looked great. Right. We all also should have talked about specifically what you're looking for in mulligans right like what's your what are you looking for let's do it so in canon um this is very much a um early early rhystic study or mystic remora is very good if you're in first position um almost always i'm shipping a first seven and sometimes even a second seven if it doesn't have a turn one canon um especially if i'm later in seat order and the reason is that we want to be able to get in under draneth magistrate um if that's coming down so that depends on pot evaluation but turn one canon is just very powerful and usually means that you're starting your um, second turn with three or more uh, untapped mana that you have access to. The other things that we're looking for are clear lines to Basalt Monolith or clear lines to Seaborn Muse. So that can either be a, a combination of mana sources and tutors that are going to let us cast those things um, or just the, the right pieces to um, be able to, you know, try and try and go off and defend it, um, which was kind of what that hand was, um, a, an, a Force of Will Up and two great cards, Seaborn Muse and the One Ring that will eventually win us the game. Hell yeah. We didn't do a pod composition for that one, but we'll do one for the next one here. We're playing against the Gila. We're playing against Timna Thrasios. And we're playing against um, Yorn, the Snow Stacks Commander. Okay. That's our pod here. <laughs> what order is Kinnon? What are we in Kinnon? The Sultai one? We are second. Okay, we're second. We're second. Yeah, yes. So it goes Najila, then us on Kinnon. Then Yorn. Yorn, then Timnathrasios. The sand is Misty Rainforest, Wooded Foothills, Gaia's Cradle, Mox Diamond, City of Brass, Crop Rotation, and Coma. Close? No? It's, turn one it's, cannon? it's good because there's a turn one cannon, but there's four lands and there's no action until Coma. So if we get a turn one cannon down, we're then doing nothing yeah, for several turns. Which well, is... technically it's three lands because you have to pitch one to Mox Diamond. Yeah. Right, but but there's also a crop rotation and we have guys. That's cradle. true, yeah. We already have the guys' just, cradle. It's mana. It, yeah, this is a it's mana just hand. mana, but not quite enough. Like it can cast Coma on turn two from what we see here, right? There's no way that crop rotation can make that happen. So... No, especially because cradle's in your hand. Yeah. So like Emergent Zone's like one of the only other lands that you want to look for a homeward path if you end up finding the chimera but yeah yeah i i think this hand does not get there oh, this is unfortunate though because that we were just talking about turn one kin is most important but sometimes it's got to be turn one kin plus a little bit more yeah turn right? one kin and, and some and amount of action yeah, yeah some amount of interaction if you had force of will this is probably closer yeah. right 
This one looks interesting here. This is Minamo School at Water's Edge, Breeding Pool, Chain of Vapor, Phantasmal Image, Birds of Paradise, Manglehorn, and Thrasios. I am almost certainly keeping this um, because turn one birds is good. Having a Fimage up in a pod that where I, ha I know at least two of these players, well, not at least, at most and also at least two of these players are playing Dockside is very appealing. Um, uh, what, you Plus, Manglehorn messes up their dock side too. Yeah, Manglehorn. So Manglehorn is very strong. Like I just, I'm, I'm finding that card is o always, always feels good, more or less. Is there um, ever a situation where you would like consider turn two Manglehorn instead of turn two Kinnon and just like get like be just like be not the aggressor? Yeah, it really depends on how how fast other folks are going. In this pod, I'm not really that worried about Dranith because um, I don't, I don't think it's coming from you know. Maybe Any of those maybe, maybe, maybe Yeah, maybe one deck. From Tim Detana. Def or I'm sorry, Tim I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think it's coming Deus from Najila. It's yeah. coming from probably one deck. So, yeah, I, I, I could see getting the Minglehorn down first, especially if someone else has a fast start. But most especially if um, if my other opponents play a bunch of artifacts where it's going to be a good dock side, and that's the line that people are going to want to lean into. Um, so, yeah, I think this one's probably a keep. Did you say there was a Gilded Drake too? There is no what were the last. Drake? What were the last two? It cards? was Manglehorn and Thrasio. So Thrasio, 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 there. So you have some extra card draw too, um, in case you can't do Kinnon activations later. But this one's a safe keep. It's not busted, broken. It's super excited, but I, it's. I think it's a keep. Yeah. Did you talk about Chain of Vapor too? Because oh, you have a little helpful. bit of interaction as well. I like Chain of Vapor. I've been lower on it lately because um, if. Uh, with with Moonsnare prototype and Autobara and soon um, Colossal Sky Turtle, I'm I'm feeling like the channel versions of these are just much better. Yeah. Um, even though they cost a lot more, so I, I like having Chain of Vapor. It feels very good on like an Underworld Breach turn, but against this particular pod composition, I don't think it's actually that strong. Um, it you know all it's gonna do is like bounce the Derevi basically. Which can which, which can be great, yeah. yeah it can be good, turn. I see what you mean, yeah. Dylan, what deck would you like to do some test hands for? Let's do Tim Nijeska. I had a hunch you were saying. This you is the one that I've been that. the hottest on recently. I think it's got some pretty cool lines. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's take a look at uh, potentially hot hand. Real quick, before we get, but real quick, I just want to say what we're looking for with this deck. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. this deck. Although it's it's not the fastest deck at the table. It oh, it reads like a turbo deck. I'm not playing Ad Nauseum. I'm playing Peer into the Abyss, and I'm getting it off of a Hoarding Broodlord a lot of the time. I play this deck a little bit closer to a mid-range deck, which I know feels a little bit strange because I'm having 23 lands. It has the ability to go very fast. It can do that, but more often than not, I feel like I am not the beatdown. I don't feel like I'm the fastest deck at a lot of pods, so I am very easily able to switch over to a controlling route. So the things that I'm looking for are ways to get Timna out on turn one or two and follow it up with Jessica basically immediately or things that can get Hoarding Broodlord into the graveyard and or into play. Uh, that, I mean, that's kind of get the commanders out or get the win condition out. Um, those are the main those are the main things we're looking for. But I'm very OK a lot of times with just like one land. It, we don't need to a lot of the time. Well, your pod, you are playing against Orvar, Thalia and the Gitrog monster. OK. And Tyler. Karpsaka. Karksaka, okay. Okay. Uh, Any time I'm playing in a pod with tutus like Kark and Sakashima, I am thrilled because Jessica kills tutus very well. So oh, that's a good point. So yeah. far, I feel okay. All right. Well, your opening hand is Bloodstained Myers. Seat position? Oh, yeah. You are in third. What's the What is it? It's Kark Sakashima and then Orvar. The stacks player is going last. After me. Perfect. Yes. This is great. This is the dream. Bloodstained Mire, Scalding Tarn, Mana Confluence, Imperial Seal, Opposition Agent, Rite of Flame, and Deflecting Swat. This is strange. That's Three exactly kind of what I thought of, too. There's a lot of powerful cards in this hand. Three lands, Imperial Seal, Rite of Flame. So that starts off to sound okay. It's pretty good. But this is really like turn one Imperial Seal into turn two... I opposition can't. agent with and the sorcery right of flame? speed opposition agent or Jessica for one. The right of flame can't help cast Timna. The awkward part about the tutor in your hand is that if you don't have anything that like kind of combos with something, it can kind of make the tutor feel like, well, what am I going to get here? And like, this is one of the, what am I going to get scenarios? Cause you're setting yourself up for turn two, not for like a turn one or anything. If I could reliably cast smothering tithe on turn two, which this hand, there's no fast mana, right? Right of flame. Just the right of flame. Yeah. I can cast a three mana spell on turn two. I don't think I love this hand. I think I ship. Yeah. It has appealing things I get, but I think we can get a little bit greedier. We might have to get uh, even more appealing. Let's see what these are. So we have Mem Knight, Mana Confluence, Sensei's Top, 
Cloudstone Curio. It's the el- the right, other one. Sorry, I, don't I, know I didn't set it. it to that. Dance of the Dead, Tainted Pact, and Bolus of Citadel. Oof, this is close. The I first like couple words you is... said was good, and the last words, I, I wanted to hear some other yeah, stuff. Yeah, I feel like it's parts of everything you want, but nothing goes with each other. Yes, yeah, I, I agree. This one's unfortunately, too many of these cards are going to rot in our hand yeah. before we can do anything. Go to six. Only one mana source, too. Um, well, this one makes up for it in mana sources. Ancient Tomb, Soul Ring, Grim Monolith, March of Otherworldly Light, Enlightened Tutor, Cabal Ritual, and Gamble. Ooh, wait, what was the lands? What was the mana? Ancient, no it's color, all no colorless. color mana source. It is all colorless. Shit, ship it. Go to five. Unfortunate. Um, this is really close, though. Obviously, most of these hands are pretty yeah. close, but. Well, we're going to make up for it really quick here. We have Mox Amber, Command Tower, Jeweled Lotus, Hope of Gearper, Savine's Reclamation, Diabolic Intent, and Bolus of Citadel. Oh, yes. Yeah, this, we got everyone, one. This, everyone, this is why you mulligan. So what are we on a five right now? We're going down to five. Can I see it? This is so hard for me to frame yeah, in my head. Totally. I, I'm a visual guy. Yeah, know? dude. I was. It's so difficult. All right. So we have Command Tower, Jeweled Lotus for turn one, Timna. Mox Amber, Hope of Gearper? You said we're on a five. We're on a five, yeah. So I think we ship the Savine's Reclamation and the Bolus of Citadel. I think those are two very easy ships And right we go here. Command Tower, Jewel Lotus, Timna, which is a kind of a bummer because I want that Jewel Lotus really to cast Jessica, but I think we got Command Tower, Jewel Lotus, Timna, Mox Amber, Hope of Gearper, turn two, draw two cards and or Diabolic Intent. Uh, and set up, which is again unfortunate. The Bolus Citadel is going, but we don't have anybody to cast right now, so we need to do other stuff. And this is how we get out of a mulligan. Turn two, draw two cards, extra cards with Timna and Hope of Gearper. That's a good way to win a yeah, game. Yeah, this Jeweled Lotus really pushes this hand into yep. like really playable territory. So here. yeah, this one's a great five. Definitely keep it. Definitely have a yeah. good chance of winning the game. Right. I don't know what you get quite yet with that Diabolic Intent. It might be something like a Smothering Tithe. It might be if um, you do draw just one more Mana Source too. That also gives you the option to just play Jessica too. So maybe you even want to save Diabolic Intent until you know what you want to get later. It's going to depend on how the table goes, but we have some options. It's the same scenario, right? Like you have a bunch of different stuff, but you don't know. Exactly exactly which uh, quite to go for should we do one, one more, more? We, uh, that was how many test hands did we do of tim to jessica was that, that one was, that was just one that was just one, that was just confirmed. one. Then, yeah we're gonna do another confirm one here so you are same table Different same table. table but you're going f- what what seed order should he be in tyler i'm gonna like i know what the hand is put I'm him in like, first put him in first Ooh, so what's okay. the me Kark sakashima you thalia gitchrog Kark sakashima and then the other one. That Why did we, we said pick Orvar. such weird decks? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He picked it. All right. Uh, so this hand is Mana Crypt. Keep. 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 Yeah, keep. Keep. Yeah? No, it is. No, yeah. you said Mana Crypt. Mana Crypt, so. Gemstone Caverns, The One Ring, Silence, Burnt Offering, Final Fortune, Jessica's Will. You're going I gotta first. I got to see it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I do keep it. Is this? No, so col- you have no color mana sources. The problem. I had the ring. Who cares? Uh, you no, know, it's close. If, if this was a cast it. if this was a five or a four, I would keep it. It'd yeah, be very and unfortunately, close. it is a ship it. Yeah, yeah. Shipping. All right, well, let's go to second seven. Second seven here is unfortunate. Mox Amber, Esper Sentinel, Enlightened Tutor, Imperial Seal, Orcish Bowmaster, Wishclaw Talisman, and Animate Dead. Your one mana no source yep. is. This is the bummer playing 23 lands. Sometimes you see hands that look like this. My and God, Moxfield fucking loves Mox Amber. <laughs> Sounds deliberate. Mox Amber, Sacred Foundry, Cloudstone Curio, Esper Sentinel, Eagles of the North, Villas, and Dragon's Rage Channel. Uh, hell yeah. A lot of big CMC creatures here, but yeah, I'm pretty this sure one's you great. keep this, right? This one's, yeah, Sacred Foundry, DRC, Mox Amber to Surveil. This is a six. I mean, so tell me if I'm wrong, wrong but I, I, think, I think what jumps out is that if you're in first seat position, you get a turn one Esper Sentinel, and that's got to feel Very good, right? Yeah, that's yeah. super good. Definitely Villas is the one that's going to the bottom, because we don't want that one in our hand anyway. We want to yeah. entomb it or do something else to the later. But yeah, this one's great, because the Eagles look really great here also. Um, turn one, DRC, turn one, Sacred Foundry, DRC, Mox Amber, Surveil, tap the Mox Amber. Maybe so you can't tap the Mox you can't Amber tap with Esper Sentinel. You have to look for a land. So maybe yeah, you're probably right. It's just the Esper Sentinel instead. Esper Sentinel I think you just play Mo- Esper, and then the next turn you're probably setting yourself Don't up for. Don't worry about for, the DRC. Um, well, for for uh, plane cycling the the Eagles, and then also casting DRC second turn, right? Yeah, you you can cycle the Eagles on turn one because you Esper. Uh, Mox Amber. You can't tap the, the Mox, Mox Amber, Amber tap until you have a legend, Dylan. 
Yep, 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 yep. You sound so upset. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So you can still search for land on turn two and play a DRC then. So I guess you hold the Mox Amber. You just play turn one Esper Sentinel. Yeah, you can sandbag the Mox turn one, Amber. I think, yeah. yeah, just and then put the Villas to the bottom. Turn one Unless Sacred Foundry Esper Sentinel. Unless you're worried about someone else having like a fish. There's two fish decks at the table. Well, there's a there's a uh, um, Get Rug Monster deck, right, too. So you are at risk of rule of law. So. No, no, it's Orvar. Orvar, Kark, Sakashima, Thalia, and the Git Rog Monster. Thalia, that's what Gitrog. I said. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess no, you did. Yeah. You said, you said they, just Git Rog, which Gitrog. is correct, but I thought you that meant the other one. That triggered a completely one. different card in my yeah. brain. <laughs> yeah, Git Rog is a different card. This is Thalia and the Git Rog. Thanks, Wizards, for doing this to everyone. Either way, this one's a keep. This one's a keep. Cool. All right. Then we're going to move on. We're going to do uh, Can You Smell What the Rock is Cooking? This is one of your decks. This is one of my decks here. This is my Rocco deck. What's my What's my pod composition? Someone tell me. I got it. <clears throat> you are playing against, uh, in pod one, in table seat one, is Tim Nijeska. I'm playing it. Oh, in okay. seat two, Atraxa. I'm playing it. In seat three, uh, Thrasios Dargo. Me again. I'm okay. playing it. These are all my decks. You're playing as three versions of me. Yep. And in seat four, you playing Rocco. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Here, why don't you tell me what my you. opening well, hand how, is yeah, then? How yeah. the turntables have turned. How dare you? We have Tarnished Citadel, Baseju, Who Endures, Exotic Orchard, Jeweled Lotus, Gemstone Caverns. You're going last. You're welcome. Ah, Cathar you. Commando and Felidar Guardian. I'm pretty sure I'm keeping this. You're keeping this one. Yeah. So what I'm it. looking for in Rocco is normally like some sort of interactive stacks piece I can play pretty early or a way to get some sort of advantage really quick and get Rocco out so that I can get like Esper Sentinel really quick or like the one that lets me bounce Rocco back to my hands. I don't fucking know. It's yeah. on the screen. With the Jeweled Lotus in the hand and the ability to have two lands in play on my first turn, this is a pretty easy keep. I think so. Cathar Commando lets me interact still on a board and let me get rid of something that's causing me trouble. And I have Kik I have Felidar Guardian, so maybe Jeweled Lotus will help me get Kiki. Kik Kik that's, that's funny. Very <laughs> funny, Cameron. No, Jeweled Lotus will probably help me get like a turn one Esper Sentinel and like end there. Yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, like... You could get it. You, you're playing last. You get the Gemstone Caverns pitch. What do you? If you keep this, what would you? What do you pitch to Gemstone? Probably one, one of the lands. The other lands. One of the lands. Like Tarnish like Citadel, and then my I play Exotic Orchard as my land for turn. Then and then you get to uh, Rocco for two. I can your first Rocco, turn. I could Rocco for two. I don't know what two I would want to Rocco for. You play Dranith Magistrate. I do play Dranith. Would be pretty good. I'm playing against decks that are probably not going to play their commander on turn one. Even though we just did one where I did have a turn one Timna, but more often than not, turn two. Probably Probably. Yeah, that's true. Turn Dranith Magistrate could be good. I've, be good. That's the best part about Rocco is now I have options, and it might depend on what the entire table does on turn one through three that will determine what I go get to. So yeah. um, I think this is definitely a keep, and I think this gives me a lot of flexibility at my one CMC, two CMC slot, thanks to Jeweled Lotus. So. Do another one? Yeah, do another one. Let's do one more. Cool. So we got Taiga, Cathar Commando, Professional, Facebreaker, Elvish Mystic, Bloom Tender, Eldritch Evolution, and Teamer Sabertooth. Yeah, this one stinks. Close is is like you have you have good mana dorks. Turn like, one land into turn turn one land dork into turn two bloom tender, but no that's other mana. So sources. slow. Yeah. That's if I had another land and could like hold up a bolt or play another mana yeah. dork or literally just have a second land in play, I would feel much better about it. But this is a clear time where your second seven is heaven can i ask you something about this hand yeah the reason it seems so close to me is that you have both eldritch evolution and team receiver tooth doesn't this mean you can get to um potentially get to a dockside loop depending on how the other table plays yeah depending on how the table plays but the table might not play that way yeah I you are going fourth but you have to hit that second land drop uh, within two draws. And how many lands are you playing? 29, I think. What's that math? Like hey, That's a pretty 30. high. No, 30, actually. So 30, 30 lands. How, what's the math to do to figure that out? I have out? a decent chance of hitting the land, but I have a decent chance of not hitting the land or like hitting another mana dork that's like not really going to help me out. Well, you I can't have a decent chance of math. <laughs> the math is <laughs> the math a decent chance. We have a decent chance of both of these things. Well, I do oh have a God. decent chance of each. <laughs> decent is a big it's blanket subjective. word. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is the math? Fine. So you have seven cards here. So that means and one in the seven cards here and one in the command zone, so which means eight, you you have ninety one cards. Ninety two. Ninety two. Right? I already fucked it up. Ninety two cards. So there's ninety two cards and you already have one land out of the deck. So so if there are twenty nine lands in the deck, then you're saying twenty eight out of the remaining ninety one cards. Right? So it is just under one in three are your are your odds of drawing a land. Yeah. But your odds of drawing a land in the next two turns 
Um, the first one, the first card you draw is it's um, twenty eight out of ninety one. The next one you draw, assuming you don't draw a land, is then twenty eight out All of right, ninety. You can stop right there because these are so low odds that I'd rather risk no, it. They're they're no, they're not. They're not. No, they're not. They're not. Yeah. Guys, so it's like it's like thirty percent. No, your odds each time are thirty percent, but in sixty percent in total, it's like sixty percent. Is you, that really, that can't be how it works? You just add it up. That can't yeah. be how it works. You just add the two percentages together. I mean, in, thirty. No, isn't it thirty percent two individual it's times? Thirty percent will happen one time, and then thirty percent will happen another time. That's one out of three for two times. And that is what it is. <laughs> is that true? I, I love you say that is what it is. Is that true? What? The first time you draw a card, and it's one out of three, it'll be a land. Second time, one out of three again. That's true. That's a true thing I said. That's still too low for me to feel comfortable keeping this hand when I could just go to a second seven. But you're saying effectively that means there is a 60% chance we'll hit a land. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was just trying to, because you, you asked what the math was. <laughs> I just is said it, what is the it math actually was. 60% chance that within two cards you'll hit a land? I'm is pretty that sure that's how it is? works, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, we to definitely me that's not... haven't gotten rules wrong recently. This isn't rules. This or is math. Math wrong <laughs> at all. I Because I looked at that as bad. I would interpret that in my mind as bad math. But if I'm wrong, I would like to be proven otherwise. But I think that uh one in three chance two times in a row i'm not wait i'm not banking on those odds i'm definitely not banking land. on those odds whether the math is right or not i'm not banking on the odds in any capacity i won't listen to the math i won't oh god <laughs> it's gotten me far before <laughs> i'm gonna hit this draw button twice and let's see if we draw a land. oh yeah okay it is not a land it's, it's an, an elvis spirit it's guide elvis spirit guide it's basically a land that's <laughs> two it is a delighted half land. Right, also yeah, basically definitely land, but not I a land keep this so hand. we were right we didn't draw a land yeah we didn't draw a land All i right. told you we know yeah. math do a, give me a second let's, seven. Let's, give me a second let's seven. go out to a second seven. Yeah. Deal another hand. Oh, we have Tarnished Citadel, Gemstone Caverns, Calamity's Wake, Professional Facebreaker, Crop Rotation, Sylvan Safekeeper, Bloom Tender. See, I feel like this hand is also piss. I don't know. Oh, I'm going last and You're it has last. a Gemstone Caverns? Turn one Bloom Tender. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's something. Turn one Bloom Tender is actually pretty good because then you have Sylvan Safekeeper, which is very nice. Professional Facebreaker will come in and help you make even more mana soon. I don't, I don't love this, but I don't hate this. You have mana. You have a lot of ways to find one yeah. you love. You're still on a second seven. Second second even if you don't love seven. it, I would ship it. Yeah, I'm gonna ship it. Yeah, have a lot of mana. Tons of mana and, I have and protection. Mana. The Facebreaker is rough because Facebreaker is really the only thing that's like kind of guaranteed, quote unquote, to be able to get in for damage here. Nothing else I'm really comfortable sending in and I'm more inclined to use for mana on its own since they're just dorks. If you were going second, I think this hand is more keepable than it is go going last. I definitely agree. I feel like I need interaction that isn't quite calamity's wake if i'm going last you year. want some interaction okay yeah. let's go to six fucking cathar commando again we got bloodstained mire cathar commando archivist of agma fintorn elves <clears throat> sorry flintorn elves sylvan safekeeper sylvan library and elvish spirit guide mm. i like this one honestly on a six i i kind of love this turn I one sylvan library or dork turn one archivist of agma there's a lot of there's a couple of the options you could go with yeah i'd probably do a dork on turn one turn one flinthorn elf and then move on from there to be able to do like turn two safekeeper and then when super no one's ready for it flash in the archivist of agma then that yeah, would be really and if fun. you draw a land you can sylvan library and then archivist on turn two that's also true and just completely shit on everyone on the table i love that but what are the odds of drawing a land cameron <laughs> having just done this i that's wonder if true. i'm a boomer because i look at this hand on a mulligan to six and i am playing bloodstained mire elvish spirit guide sylvan library on my first turn i'm not doing this I, I could see that too yeah the mana is not what i'm I, what i need I, i'm down a card so i need to get back in the game in, in form of cards and archivist of agma is not as reliable as I, Sylvan Library. I guess be. that's true. But I could be wrong about that. The mana thing could be wrong. This is Rocco, which is a deck that only needs mana, so maybe I'm wrong. Well, if I play the mana dork, I have the chance to be able to play Sylvan Library on turn two. If you certainly will. Yeah, I just so, think turn one Sylvan Library is a lot better than turn two Sylvan Library. Yeah, that is definitely true. No lands again. The math is wrong, Tyler. Yeah, but you got a Simeon Spirit Guide. You still would be able to execute that play. Yeah. Um, I, th I just think Sylvan Library on turn one is much, much, much better than Sylvan Library on turn two. For some reason, I think it's a world of difference, whereas the extra mana that you get from Elvis, especially in this hand, because we had the Elvis, 
Well, no, we're getting rid of the Elvish Spirit Guide. Yeah, but no, I mean, you're definitely right. Because Sylvan Library requires you to go to your untap step before it does anything, the earlier you can get it out, the better. Especially because people start to attack you when Sylvan Library comes into play, too. So on turn one, when nobody's able to attack you, it's nice to be able to just draw those cards for free, basically. But you're still going to get attacked, whether it's early in the game or late in the game, if you have the Sylvan Library in play. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a good thing. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I think on a mulligan, when I'm looking for a second land, I'm looking to try to make sure I can hit that second land before the Elvish Mystic, especially since I know I can turn two the Elvish Mystic and not much changes. Yeah, definitely. Like I can turn one Dork, turn two Sylvan Library, or turn two Sylvan, turn one Sylvan Library, turn one Dork, and by the end of turn... I said that backwards. I can either turn one, dork, turn two, Sylvan Library, or turn one, Sylvan Library, turn two, dork. But by the end of turn two, I have both of those things. The only difference is I have Sylvan Library in that time rather than gain the mana. I think my thought process was the upside of having the potential to draw a a land for my second turn will be better to have three mana on my second turn as opposed to two or four potentially with the spirit guide as well if you hit the land it allows you to like turn two sylvan library and sylvan safekeeper so you get to deploy more mana worth of spells yeah. but if you don't hit the land it's I, it sets you really far back yeah and i guess if we're playing on the we're not planning on hitting the land thing then maybe you're right it is just better to go sylvan library try to find your other land and go from there yeah i almost always i i plan like i'm not gonna hit the land like what would happen if this hand goes as badly as possible what's my play there that's kind of like my final decision point of like if i should keep this hand like if everything if nothing works out for me can this hand do anything and if the answer is no i'll try to ship the hand yeah so this is definitely a six it's not the most exciting six but we have we have six we went through a bunch of mulligan stuff we did so those were some test hands and that's what it's like to mulligan in cedh thank you so much for watching if you'd like to support us directly you can do so on patreon like our 100 dollars patrons socal acura storm again cool bean man luke cook young mox aj albosebi demon of rosgris kawaja a hamid lauren connell and baby g bus if you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at playtowinmtg.com. Huge shout out to the sponsor of the show, Dragon Shield. You can check the affiliate link down below to pick up Dragon Shield product and other cool Dragon Shield stuff. Well, it's all Dragon Shield product. Pick it up. And make sure you follow us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, especially because we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers on, in, on TikTok. Is that what they're called? I think they're just followers. Follow us on TikTok. We want 10,000 talks. Thanks for watching or listening. See you next time. Goodbye. Dodge, Stashes, Mitchell Shepard, Justin, Ben Solo, Nicole Marikovic, Steven Schlichty, A Big TP15, Pedro, Jacob Depp, Michael Ballou, Meow Wild Face, Swampy McGee, David Nelson, and Jordan Bags. Thanks, y'all. I, I just did a girth joke before you got here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was glad I missed it. You guys trying to get your mouths around the microphones? Can you get... Whoa! Whoa. Dylan, why He's is your like, mouth so big? I, I can unlock my jaw a little bit. Oh, it gets that's real big. Too. You have a big head too. So big head. Also... It's already. It's on. Yeah, it already. already big your frame. proportions gonna be can, a little bit bigger. So. I can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's good. Okay. <laughs> Sick. It's gotta be really useful for eating hot dogs. Oh, I can eat them so fast.